Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. We are delighted to talk to Mr. Evgeny Afinievsky, film director of Winter in Fire. What was your personal experience with Maidan? When did you arrive? It was a fascinating experience because I never saw such unity, unity of people, different nationalities, people, different social groups, people of different uh, mentalities all together in order to achieve one common goal. It was like one big family and this is what uh, literally uh, bought my heart. When did you decide to do such a story? You know what, when I arrived actually, I was realizing that the history is happening because for the first time people just self-organized came out and it was young people. It was basically a birth of youth movement. And uh, for me it was literally fascinating to observe this thing. And then things started to unfold spontaneously. Nobody was expecting that the kids will be beaten at 4 o'clock in the morning. Nobody was even expecting people being kidnapped or even killed. So events started to unfold spontaneously. And you know what? Here we realized that the history is happening and this needs to be documented. So we started to collect footage and we started to talk to the people. And uh, with the help of my amazing, fascinating crew that you have here, so we started to document every aspect of what's happening there. You've cooperated with a one cameraman, with a bunch of volunteers, with the different TV channels. There is a lot of professionals, non-professionals who've been on Maidan. And all of them tried to capture this story. All of them wanted to share this story. All of them who heard that I, I came from, basically from the United States, and I'm an American filmmaker. So all of them wanted to share this footage because they all wanted to document the history happening. Where did you get those footages made from the bags of Berkut? Who made it? This documentary actually, it's a collaboration of over 30 people from uh, like professionals and non-professionals who've been able to capture the stories and they wanted to share these stories with the entire world. And for me, I'm so grateful to them that they allowed to have their footages and they became the part of this fascinating project. How did you shoot the speakers for the movie? You know, I met a lot of fascinating characters in the movie. And what was interesting, I was trying to find something some characters that their stories can be related to all people all across the globe. For example, this fascinating character of Romka. For me, it's the. Uh, oh, so uh, nice. I love you so much. But you know what? For me, it's the Gavrosh of the uh, Ukrainian. He's real Gavrosh. He's Ukrainian revolutionary Gavrosh. And you know what? He was fascinating because he ran from his home from the beginning of the movement. He was already on the first days uh, on Maidan. And he actually was staying there until the end. And you can observe through the movie all this fascinating school of life by his own words. It was my school of life. He's actually saying that in the movie. It was his school of life. And you can observe his maturity through these three months of, uh, of the movement. So Romka was a fascinating character. You can see amazing character of Sergei Gayan. Again, inside of the movie, Sergei tells... It's my future here. It's my life here. It's my motherland here. So I'm here because of that. And uh, Sergei, who not was born in Ukraine, but in, in heart and soul, he was Ukrainian. And it's important thing for me to show that people from different nationalities, different ages, different social classes, been there. Because for me, this unity of all kind of people brought together to achievement of their common goal. Maidan won, and this is what important for me to bring with this movie. So you started the work with the movie, and then when Netflix arrived, I finished first cut, and I during the when I was cutting, I called to my friends Lati Grobman and John Batsek. John Batsek is famous for a lot of amazing uh, projects like In Search for the Sugar Man, Restrepo. So John Batsek and Lati offered me to bring it to Netflix and to show the first cut to them. They did it, and immediately I received a call, come back, let's uh, find a way to cut it more globally appealing. Because I was inside of the subject, and with my crew there, it was hard to be more specific and more objective towards the global audience. Because, of course, the movie is about human stories behind the headlines. But in the same time, there was a lot of things that were so obvious for me, but not obvious for the American audience or some, let's say, Latin American audience who not was following the whole event through and did know the whole history. So when I arrived, I, John, we approached Angus Wall, who is a famous uh, David Fincher's editor, who did uh, 
who actually produced a lot of Errol Morris's movies, documentaries, movies. So Angus loved the footage, and he said the same thing. I can help you as a producer to reshape the image and make it appealing more globally. So as with this great team, with Angus and with John, and then Netflix uh, supporting all this, we achieved the goal. And right now you can see the movie that can be telling the entire story to anybody who even not familiar with the subject. How will the first cut of the movie look like? What they ask you to change? They love the cut, but they were missing the answers. They were missing the answers to a lot of things. Why people came out? Why uh, people came out after the first beating? These questions were obvious for us who been on Maidan. We were understanding this, but they were missing in my first cut because it was just rough cut. And these questions were missing, these answers actually, they had the questions. So as the audience, as the global audience who not was following everyday events in Ukraine, they were missing these answers. Why, for example, after the horrible beating with the students, more and more people came out? Why, for example, uh, people came on the first place? So all these questions were raised and we answered to these questions. I don't think how many Americans could really understand the movie and isn't it too late to make this movie after almost two years after the start of Maidan? This is a unique and amazing situation that needs to be brought to the eyes of the entire world. Never in the world we had situation where people from different social groups, from different nationalities, where people together with the religion been together. Usually the religion the faces, they are a part of the government that are trying to control the people. Here, the religion being together with the people and together they achieved this goal. So this unusual situation, this unusual situation needs to be brought to the people so they can study that together they can achieve goals, they can won the battles. And this is also brings the another subject that people of every nationality can be together, something that, for example, Middle East is facing. So for me, it's important to deliver these messages. What could Russians lead from the experience of Maidan? What kinds of lessons they can learn? I, it's an interesting question. Again, I'm a filmmaker who's trying to deliver messages. And uh, I think that unity can win and to show that people and church can be together and that everybody can be as one big family, how it was in Maidan. What were the hardest, the toughest moments of Maidan you experienced? For me, I think every moment is emotion. I'm still emotionally attached to, the, to everything because I still like continuously living in the moment of Maidan. And uh, if, going, if we're going back, I think... <sighs> it's hard to remember... Sergei alive and then Sergei dead. It's, it's just. How do you like him in person? He, I met, but I not. He was uh, associated with him. You know what? I not so was. He was just a random guy. Yeah. Years, and then he died. I'm like, oh my God, I saw him. I saw him. Yesterday. Yeah, and my guys were interviewing him. So it's it's something that you know what. What was beauty of Maidan? People not were doing the publicity. People not were publicizing themselves. They not were seeking PR. They were just a normal people who came to stand their grounds. And this was the fascinating thing. Nobody was looking for PR. People were there because they believed in their future. People been there because they were ready to stood their grounds for this great future. And this is the beautiful thing. This is Natalka Pisnia for Ukraine Today from Washington, D.C.